it's time for us to create our first Pulsar cluster. Clicking Create Cluster or New in the Instances box of the dashboard will both bring us to the Deployment Types page. The hosted option will deploy a production-ready cluster in the Stream Native Cloud in just a matter of minutes, while the Managed Cloud option provides you with a fully managed Pulsar cluster with all of Stream Native's features in your own cloud environment. If you are interested in the Managed Cloud option, you are encouraged to click Contact Us to provide your contact information or click More Information about our options. Today we'll be deploying a production-ready cluster in the Stream Native Cloud. We start by configuring our instance. We can see here that an instance consists of one or more clusters working together. One example of this would be creating multiple clusters inside one instance to enable geo-replication between these clusters. Currently, the UI will only allow you to create one cluster per instance, but additional clusters can be created by contacting support. I type my instance name and choose either AWS or Google Cloud as deployment options. A cluster will consist of two or more Pulsar brokers, three or more bookkeeper servers known as bookies, and a zookeeper cluster providing configuration and coordination management. If you aren't already familiar with Pulsar, brokers are the stateless serving layer that is responsible for sending and receiving messages from Pulsar clients, while Bookkeeper is the storage layer where multiple copies of each message are securely stored. We will discuss sizing of these components on the next page. For now, we need to define the name and location of our cluster. Next, we must define the size of our cluster. The size of each broker is defined using compute units, while the size of each bookie is defined using storage units. Looking closely at the upper right, we can see the costs for our total compute units and storage units. This makes up our base costs, but additional costs will include ingress, egress, and storage costs. Scrolling down in the lower right, we can see the limits on throughput, as well as cluster limits for namespaces, topics, consumers, and producers for the settings we currently have selected. With 0.2 compute unit per broker and a total of 0.4 compute units, you can see we will have two brokers in this basic configuration. Completing a similar comparison for storage units, we can see this configuration will have three bookies. While the upper limit on topics is 4,000, this configuration is ideal for thousands of messages per second across tens of topics. Taking a look at the next largest option in the basic configuration, you can see this will provide you with three brokers and three bookies, and compute units and storage units appropriate for tens of thousands of messages across hundreds of topics. In addition to larger sizes, you also have the option of clicking on the Advanced tab and manually selecting the number of brokers and their comp compute units, as well as the number of bookies and their storage units. This is also where additional features can be enabled. I wouldn't worry about this too much right now, because at the end of the video, I will show you how you can always resize your cluster in the future if needed. Going back to the Basic tab, selecting the smallest option, and clicking Finish, the deployment of our Zookeeper nodes, Bookkeeper bookies, and brokers will begin. After just a few minutes, you should see cluster provision successfully. Returning to the dashboard and waiting just a few seconds, the indicator next to your new instance will turn green. The left column should now be updated to include the tenant namespace, resources, and admin sections. If not, select your instance on the dashboard. If you ever need to resize your cluster, select Pulsar Clusters in the left pane, followed by Edit Cluster. Here you will be able to select Basic or Advanced Settings and resize your cluster in just a matter of minutes.